Hey crafty friends, this is Jenny from crafttestdummies.com and today I am going to give you a video demo and overview of the Pentel Arts Sign Brush Pens, or as my thing says, uh, Sign Pen Brush. Okay, either way. Um, so these are a water-based marker and uh, they are unique in that they have what they call a firm brush nib. So I'm gonna zoom in so you can kind of see what that looks like. So you see actually it's comprised of two parts. There's a little teeny weeny felt nib and then there's this hard plastic nib too. So what this allows you to do is actually give the pen some pressure and get some pretty cool effects. Let me show you. So what I can do is if I press hard on the downstroke, you see I'm actually getting a pretty thick line. And then if I hold it just a little bit higher, I can get a pretty thin line too. So this gives you the ability to almost instantly come up with something that looks a little bit like fancy lettering, even though I'm really horrible at it, like so. Um, it's pretty comfortable to hold in the hand. I like a slightly larger barrel, but this really is very, very acceptable. I'll just kind of show you how you can do some like nice little fancy scroll work with almost no effort whatsoever. So uh, this is traditional kind of um, heavyweight cardstock. It's actually in an off-white, but I'm gonna switch to white so you can see what it looks like with the color swatching. All right, so just to let you know, there are 12 in this particular set, which retailed at Target for about $20. I bought it with my own money, but I've seen it for less on Amazon, and I have heard that they already have them at Michael's. So I just wanna show you that there's a nice red. It's a little bit on the orangey side, but it's still very nice. There's an orange, yellow, green, a light blue, a kind of a navy blue, a dark purple, a pink, brown, tan, and a black, which I really love the fact that I have both a tan and a brown. This gives you the option for some skin tones if you're doing any marker coloring book type coloring. All right, so this is the part where I'm gonna speed things up and kind of take you through the demonstration portion. So these are supposedly blendable with water. So in this Diane Reevely journal, which is a heavy off-white paper, I went ahead and I laid down those scribbles and then I'm just using a water brush to try and lift it up. And I'm getting some success. It doesn't completely um, blend everything out, but then again, this is, kind of paper really isn't meant for that. This is more like, you know, a heavy duty journal. Um, but as you can see, I did get a little bit of happy blending there. I also saw on the package that these are supposed to never dry out, but I'm going to be honest, I'm not the person who's going to test that out for you. All right, so now we're moving on to some watercolor paper, and I just went ahead and I drew on this white uh, cold press watercolor paper, and then I took a little bit of water, and I'm just kind of blending back in, and I'm seeing a lot better blending on the watercolor paper. Um, I'm also going to do the little trick where I scribble onto the mat, and then lift up the color with the water brush, and blend it together. Now, because because this is that kind of watercolor paper and the colors want to blend, um, I'm actually pulling a little bit from the image that I drew on the paper and then that orange from the mat as well. Um, and I'm really kind of pleased with this fact. It kind of looks, um, you know, more like a watercolor paint almost. And on this trial here where I'm just using the water brush entirely, um, I'm getting a really kind of fun, pretty ombre effect. So what I, the bottom line with that then is that these pens actually have enough ink in them enough pigment so that um, they're they're highly blendable and you can water them down fairly significantly and still get a lot of juicy color out of them. All right, so for this next fun thing, I'm actually dipping the nib of the marker into the water, and now I'm just scribbling it back and forth slowly. So as that kind of ink comes back to the nib, I'm getting this really awesome ombre effect. And oh my gosh, 
how much do I love that, that I have what's basically like a calligraphy pen that I can create this ombre effect almost like a chameleon marker. I think that's spectacular. All right, so I know a lot of us like to stamp and color, so I stamped with a Dare to Be Artsy stamp pad. I have a review on that if you're interested. Now I'm going to lift a little bit of color up and color it in. Yes, that works pretty well. I'm going to outline my image with the marker and then use the watercolor marker to fill that in because that's a Another fun way of blending watercolor markers. It's so easy. Um, if you don't like to do a whole lot of blending with markers because it scares you, this is the best way to do it because you can actually just use the water brush uh, to kind of make that uh, blending happen. And now for this last uh, one that I'm going to try here, I'm actually going to do the tip to tip charging method. Now, this is kind of weird, but lots of fun. So basically, you touch the tips of two nibs together. Um, and then what I like to do is actually take the lighter of the two and start drawing with it. And as you can see, when you uh, do that, you end up with kind of a green color. And then as the ink again flows through the nib, it kind of cleans itself out and it goes to another color entirely, which in this case gives us a green to yellow ombre. So again, I'm still working on watercolor paper here. I'm just trying a little bit of blending where I overlap and blend right on the paper. And as you can see, I can get a nice convincing green just by blending right on the paper without added water. If you add a little bit of water, it becomes even more convincing and a little smoother. So I think we can consider that pretty much a blending success. Okay, and so one more time, just because I'm fascinated, I went ahead and I touched the purple pen to the pink one, and now I'm getting this cool kind of two-tone ribbon effect. Um, the purple was kind of on one side of the nib, so actually it's almost like it's self-shaded. I just think this is so much fun, and it's a great way to let your markers do the heavy lifting for you. Um, it just is such a great effect, and really, for fairly cheap pens, I am really impressed with all of it. So I know that people want to know what is the difference between these different pen nibs. So I thought I would actually include that comparison right in this review. So the Bentel brush sign markers uh, have that kind of firm nib with a little plastic bit, which gives you the ability to kind of press down on it and still maintain the integrity of the line. The Zig real brush marker actually is a real brush strip tip. It is like a paintbrush. So that means that you are really limited as to how much pressure you can put on it because those bristles will splay and fray giving you a lot less crisp of a line. Now you can use it like a paintbrush but if you see I try to press down on it you get that line that looks like it was done by a paintbrush instead of by a marker tip. Now lastly we're also going to look at the Tombow. Tombow markers are a kind of a long firm felt type nib which means that you can absolutely press down on them but because the nibs are so much bigger um, you get a lot bolder of a line if that makes sense. Now a lot of these um, if you press down you can kind of get those nice little juicy teardrop looks um, so they're really nice if you like to do decorative doodling because it's a bigger nib it gives you more kind of to work with than say these Pentel ones. Um, I try to make those little teeny weeny <laughs> <laughs> little itsy bitsy teardrops and they look like watermelon seeds or ticks or something but they're really really teeny so again that's all about like the size you can apply the same kind of pressure but you're not going to get uh you know there's there's a size issue here also i noticed the tombos when you lay them down what you get is kind of a watercolor variation you can see it there in the t and the o where it's darker when i press down harder it actually pushes more out of the nib uh so it gives you again more of a watercolor look all right, last thing, I used the Pentel sign brush markers to color this image of a mermaid. And just by using them, I got some beautiful blending and color variation. So I would absolutely recommend these for things like adult coloring books or stamped images. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this review and demonstration. Please check the cards for related content, more marker and coloring videos and reviews. Please like, subscribe, leave a comment, and above all, have a crafty day.